Uh, so let's bring up uh, Claire Cooney and Shane Simmons from the movie Runner. And Anna Margaret Holliman for Maud. And Tony Grayson for Alan Anders. All right, so uh, I guess I'll go in, in order of the movies that we saw. Um, so Claire and Shane, how, how this, this movie is so, um, it doesn't take any obvious turns. Like you, the, for if this were a feature, we kind of would be able to telegraph where this story would go, but you took it in such an interesting direction and left it at a place where I think you took a real storytelling risk. And I just want to know if you could uh, just talk about how you arrived at the ending that you... Um, okay. Are we on? Hello. <laughs> um, oh, thank you. Um, I didn't actually even consider a different ending. Um, it just kind of arrived to me as it was. And people ask me what happens next. I'm like, you tell me. Like, I, I didn't really plan it to go somewhere further. Um, and. I, I knew there was going to be a confrontation, and I knew that um, I knew that I wanted to, to feel unfinished, and yet like there was nothing else that needed to be said. Um, but that was about it. I, I didn't want it to feel like there was some kind of violent or um, over-the-top incident that happens at the end. Uh, it just wasn't that kind of movie, and um, and uh, I felt it was simpler to have it be a kind of complex emotion that they're left with as opposed to taking the easy route of like him attacking her or of them like having an empathetic, like um, a moment of understanding. Both of those felt wrong to me. I think it feels a little more unsatisfying in a way um, and that, that appealed to me. Yes. <laughs> and Shane, how did you get involved with this? Uh, you're the producer of the film and um, so I'm just wondering how you two sort of found each other we started. we date so oh okay <laughs> there we go i was like i want to make this help me please and he was like all right cool yes <laughs> uh now anna uh margaret hollyman is at the end she made our second film mod um <laughs> i'm just going in the order of the movies that we saw it seems to make sense. Um, you've been on, you've been, you know, acting in movies, both short and feature, features, uh, you know, for at least 10 years, according to your IMDb page. That's 2007 is where it started, right? So, <laughs> um, so why jump into directing now? What, uh, what, what about this story made you want to kind of take the, the plunge into, into directing? Well, I know, maybe that's the question. You're like, what made you want to do that? It was, um, I guess, uh, you know, being, I, I had the great privilege of working with so many fantastic directors um, that I feel like it was kind of this crash course. I mean, I didn't study film in college. Um, so I, I always had this deep-seated insecurity that I, uh, you know, that I couldn't do it or intimidation of the actual equipment of the camera and all of that. And then I kind of realized for, yeah, almost 10 years, I've been around a lot of cameras <laughs> um, and amazing directors who are all very encouraging and were kind of like, why don't you try this? Because fun fact, being an actor is not that fun a lot of the time. <laughs> um, and you're not working most of the time. And so you do have a lot of time in your hands. And um, I don't know about you, how you feel about this too, but, but uh, there is something uh, fun about trying to um, take that on. And another fun fact about working in independent film for an actor is that you rarely have a lot of money in your bank account. So uh, that was one of my odd jobs I would do. I would just go up to women's, like when I was living in New York or in LA, and I would go babysit these, get these you know, families, having not met them before. And um, I started to realize that the moms were getting younger and I was getting older. And so I was like, oh, this is gonna happen. I'm gonna show up one day and it's gonna be like a girl I went to college with. So I kind of was like, let's see what that would be like. Um, yeah. Great, and um, Tony, the Alan Anders is a, a film that I've, the more I watch it, the more I, I have 
kind of my own idea of what it is. It's because I was pretty perplexed when I first saw it. Um, Same. <laughs> well, how did it start? What did it start with the monologue, or did it start with the structure and the idea? How, what What's the journey? Yeah, idea? Um, yeah, it's interesting. So Laura Moss uh, directed that piece, and she was here with Friday last year. Um, and we had met at South by Southwest the year, uh, like a couple months before. Um, so since she was in town, she, I invited her to the show that I, um, a part of, and, um, she came through and saw it as a live piece. Um, so like typically it's like, I come on as like a hack stand up comic, uh, for like a minute and then um, the Requiem for a Dream theme music starts playing and it gets like super surreal and I take off my skin and everything and so, uh, Laura saw that and was like, I need to make this into something. Um, and so she actually, so we made the piece and just filmed it as is. Um, and then she discovered in the in post the, um, this sort of uh, cycle of getting reintroduced over and over and kind of trapped uh, to perform this for eternity. Um, and the repeated audience shots, those were all kind of discovered in post, the whole structure of it. Okay, so, I mean, for me, it's it's like, it's like, sort of a, a, a purple rose of Cairo for the VHS generation. Like, that's my version of what that movie is. It's just these people who are stuck in this place having to perform the same thing over and over and over again for anybody who, you know, presses, every time somebody presses play. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that movie, but um, it's one of, it's a, it's a great Woody Allen movie from 1985, and it's really profound in that way. Um, and so speaking of editing, for, for Runner, uh, Claire, you're the editor on that film uh, as well. And the first, about a, like a few minutes of the movie, you, you're kind of playing with time, going back and forth. Was that discovered in the editing, or was that yeah, a hundred percent? The first edit was so I wrote the script to be more narrative, just straight through um, from the moment that she's on the run to being seen to running home to her having a panic attack to a couple days later uh, reading the paper and all that. So it was much more streamlined. Um, and it just wasn't working totally. Uh, it was a little bit longer as well. It was about 17 minutes at, after the first edit. Uh, and it was perfectly good, and I, I was proud of it. And I submitted it to a few film festivals with that cut. Um, but something wasn't sitting right, and, um, and the stunt wasn't as impactful as I wanted it to be, that the moment of violence wasn't as impactful as I was hoping it would be. And um, we made this film for literally nothing. Uh, and so um, we didn't have a ton of um, time or um, it, people that were going to be able to help us to achieve the level of stunt we needed. We had great people, but it just wasn't working out. So I thought, what would it be like if we didn't fully show it? Like, if we kind of just saw it through her perspective and it was just snapshots of it. And so I just kind of went back in and played with time a little bit and flashbacks, and that cut a lot of time out, and all of a sudden it started to feel much more like the movie I intended to make. And so that was really exciting to kind of discover that in the process. Yeah, um, we usually have a microphone here with a mic stand or on a mic stand for audiences to ask questions. Uh, but I don't see it here. But if, please raise your hand if you have any questions for our filmmakers. Um, I, I can see some of you. I mean, not all of you, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, so Anna for on on mod uh, at, at the risk of asking maybe too personal of a question. You're 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 a mom now. Uh, a new mom? I... Very, yeah, well, very new. Well, so, yeah. Okay, so is, is the experience of watching Maud, has it changed for you now, now that you're... Yeah, it's actually, uh, I was almost, I think I was like three months pregnant when I, made, when I shot and directed that. Was trying to have a baby, but didn't, wasn't really timing it with my first movie. I wanted, yeah, whatever, these things happen. <laughs> I digress. So happy she's here. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I kind of feel like there was some weird, like, uh, I don't know, conjuring or like a weird portal that happened with this because I am not kidding you. The other day I was like on a website looking from like Mommy and Me music classes. I'm like, well, this one's really close to the house. And then I'm just like, what is happening? Um, because it, I just couldn't have felt farther from it. Um, and I think, you know, someone the other day asked me about like, I don't know, it's like, you know, skewing this, this thing that's happening culturally, um, you know, with this world that Priscilla lives in, that's, to me, I wanted it to feel like you fell down like an Instagram hole come to life. 
Um, we were like, what? This isn't real. Oh my God, it is. Life is better in this Instagram hole. Um, but yeah, it definitely has changed my perception about things. And also, in making the movie, the woman who played Priscilla had a three-month-old. So she was like understanding her process and what she was going through while we were shooting um, and, and being a bit more, I guess I was more dismissive of, of motherhood at first. And now I'm just on the other, I'm more in Priscilla's, I don't live in Priscilla's house, let's be real. Um, but, but yeah, it definitely has kind of flipped things. And um, yeah, I'm really tired right now because I got four hours of sleep last night <laughs> because of her. So. Okay, well, we're, we're going to wrap this up soon because we started a little late and we have a show at 4.45. But I always, uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, please raise your hand or shout one out if you got one because I can't really see everybody. Um, all right, so um, <laughs> uh, I always, whenever I do a, uh, a review for RogerEbert.com and I do a Q&A with the filmmaker, I usually uh, end the review with what's next for you. So what's next for, for you? Uh, I'm currently, I just uh, started a run of festivals with a feature that I produced and um, also working on uh, a couple other projects that are in development, hopefully produced later this year, early next. Um, I'm acting in a feature, a local feature, um, called Rendezvous in Chicago. We're f filming in like two weeks. Um, so I'm acting in that, which is fun. And then I'm in like pre, 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 pro for um, co-adapting a script for a feature. Great. Um, so Laura, uh, the director, and then Brendan, the producer of the short, and I just got back from a residency. Uh, we're developing this uh, character into like a 30 minute um, comedy special. Um, so the idea is that it's like a found footage fever dream of an 80s stand-up comic. How many uh, times did you have to perform that monologue? Uh, it was a lot. It, was, it, was, I, it ended up only being like six or seven times. Okay. Um, and most of what we used was from the final take where I was just losing it by the end of it. <laughs> um, and yeah. I really just love that. Um, I uh, just uh, attempted to adapt this into a pilot um, for a TV show and I am going back to acting and producing a feature this summer where I have to tap dance. So <laughs> working on tap, tap dancing. dancing, right? God, no. No? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, if you have questions, uh, you're just shy right now, that's okay. Uh, we'll be in the lounge uh, taking some pictures, you're free to, you guys are, I don't want to speak for you, you guys will hang out in the lounge for a little bit, take some pictures, okay, and you guys can come up and ask some questions. Thanks so much for coming. Don't forget to vote with your ballot.